Visage is quite possibly the most underrated hero in the entire game. He's one of the highest win rate heroes, but at the same time has one of the lowest pick rates. So he's definitely a worthwhile hero to learn, especially since he's not actually as difficult to play as most people think. So this video is your one-stop shop for everything Visage. We're going to talk about abilities, about skill and item builds, we're going to talk about laning, about micro, about hotkeys, about team fighting, and more. Lessons that cannot be unlearned. Welcome to the Church of Obelis. So, what is Visage's role in the game? He is a hybrid damage dealer who does physical damage with his familiars, and then he does magical damage with Soul Assumption. His right click ability is not particularly impressive, so most of your damage comes from your abilities, which means that you're more level dependent than item dependent. The best way to get experience is in the mid lane, so Visage is a strong mid laner, but you can also play him as a position 3 or a 4, and actually he's stronger in lane in one of the side lanes, which we're going to go into later in this guide. So we're going to talk about position 2 Visage, 3 and 4. You can also play him as a 5, that plays out pretty similar to the 4 role. I don't really have much experience with 5 Visage, so I'm not going to cover that directly in this guide, but it's pretty much the same as position 4 Visage. So let's start by talking about Visage's abilities, which are actually quite complex. So the first one is rather simple, it's Grave Chill, it uh, slows an enemy, and it speeds yourself up and also speeds up attack speed and um, slows attack speed for the enemy. Once you have your familiars, it also boosts the attack speed and movement speed of your familiars. You can see with a couple of levels, familiars have max movement speed here. Also attack speed is also increased. So this only works on familiars, doesn't work on other controlled units, doesn't work on dominating creeps and also only works if familiars are nearby. But this is a very strong ability, it's your bread and butter spell that allows you to fight and farm. And it's particularly strong in the current patch, because most uh, abilities that give percentage based movement speed uh, were nerfed in the 726A patch, but Grave Chill was not nerfed, so this makes it effectively uh, quite a bit stronger than it used to be. Then we have Soul Assumption, which is your nuke. Now when you level up Soul Assumption, you get these little bars above your hero and these represent how many charges you have. And you gain charges whenever a nearby hero takes player-based damage. So you can see I'm being attacked by Axe, so I'm gaining charges. Every time I take 100 damage after reductions, I gain one charge. But also if I attack uh, the Axe, um, he's taking damage and also gaining charges. It also works when uh, creep heroes are attacked, so if Axe attacks my familiars, I'm also gaining charges. And um, also if I'm attacking an enemy a creep hero, like if I'm playing as a lone druid attacking uh, his bear with my familiars and his bear is attacking my familiars, uh, then I get charges for both. And it doesn't matter whether it's my own hero, enemy hero, allied hero, um, as long as it's nearby in a 1500 radius, I get those charges. And once I get those charges, I can fire off my Soul Assumption and I do damage based on how many charges I have. So uh, it does 20 base damage and then 70 damage per charge. So without any charges, this ability does basically nothing. The only only thing it's, well, it might be good for is for cancelling something like a salve but generally you always want to have max charges on this. So if you have max charges in level 1 Soul Assumption, you do 245 damage, which is absolutely insane. This is so much stronger than other level 1 nukes. Level 1 nukes typically do something like 75, maybe 100 damage. This one does 245, that's like 3 times an ordinary level 1 nuke. This ability is insane, as long as you can get the charges. The only thing that improves with this ability when you level it up is you get more max charges. So it starts with 3 max charges, goes up to 6. So if you have uh, 6 max charges, you do 
470 damage with a fully charged Soul Assumption, which is a lot. So when you fire a Soul Assumption, you lose all the dodges you currently have, but then you start regaining them, and in particular in team fights, you typically get those charges really, really rapidly. And it only has a 4 second cooldown, so this ability can output a lot of damage in team fights. But you can see the mana cost is very steep, it's 150 mana on a 4 second cooldown, so this makes Visage a very mana hungry hero. And then we have Gravekeeper's Cloak, which is your protective aura. This applies both to your hero and to your familiars, but not to anyone else. So with this ability you get um, layers, you get maximum of 4 layers, and whenever you get attacked, you lose 1 layer, but uh, you also block damage based on how many layers you have. So if you have all four layers up and you have level four Gravekeeper's Cloak, you reduce damage by 80% on that first attack. So it's 20% the reduction per layer and it stacks additively. But the aura only kicks in if you take 40 damage in a damage instance after reductions. So for example, if I, ha if I have a Tinker with uh, March on Machines, it only does 40 damage per instance, and if it does less than these 40 damage after reductions, um, so there's 30 damage after reductions, um, then it does not uh, consume a layer, but you also don't get protected. So you just take the regular damage that any other hero would. So for most heroes, the time it takes you to go from 100% HP to 50%, it's the same it takes you to go from 50% to 0%, but for Visage it's not the case. For Visage, going from 50% to, to dead is much much quicker than going from 100 to 50. So you have to keep that in mind, just because you had you know, 3 quarters health doesn't mean you're fine. If you had 3 quarters health that, and you have no charges, that just means that chances are you're probably gonna die soon. So managing your Gravekeeper's layers and being aware of how vulnerable you currently are is an important part of playing with as well. We already talked about the aura also affecting your birds, but for the birds the aura is actually even better, because for them they take reduced damage, reduced down to 20% if you have full layers up, but you don't lose any layers when that happens. So as long as you keep your main heroes safe, your familiars, as long as they're still nearby, are almost invulnerable. So they just take almost no damage here, like look at this, almost no damage. And also it doesn't matter whether it's um, instances of a greater or less than 40 damage, doesn't matter. You see my main hero is taking so much damage but the birds, uh, they're almost invulnerable here. And as soon as I'm, I go, go away here and the aura goes away, they just die so quickly. So it's very important to keep that aura up to keep your familiars alive. And these uh, these counters, these layers, restore over time, 6 seconds level, at level 1 and once every 3 seconds at uh, level 4. So if you haven't taken damage for a little bit, then yeah, these layers are going to come back up and protect your birds once again. Gravekeeper's Cloak only works against uh, player damage, so against towers, for example, you still take the full damage, so you have to be careful for that. And especially you have to watch out when you're sieging tier 2 towers and they're cliffing, then you burst die very quickly and you have to watch out and drop them in time. And this brings us to the ultimate, which is summon familiars, which unsurprisingly summons familiars. So uh, if you have familiars already up, it will replace your old familiars, and if you level up your familiars, it doesn't improve them. So you have to actually recast the ability to get those uh, new and improved familiars. So familiars start out doing only 20 damage, but then it goes up to 40 damage at level 2 and then 60 damage at level 3. Familiars have a 0.4 second base attack time, so they attack really fast. And this fast attack speed combined with the fairly low damage means that familiars are very vulnerable to damage block. So level 1 familiars only do 20 damage and on average a melee hero is going to block 8 damage so the damage goes down from 20 to 12 which is a huge drop and this also means that 
against Meliorus in particular, getting to that level 2 in Familias is so important. Because then the damage goes up from 12 to 32, which is a 167% increase. And that is just unheard of. Like other ultimates, you go up by like 30%, 40%, 50%, but you know they don't go up by 100% in, in damage as it does against ranged heroes, let alone 167% uh, against uh, melee heroes. So it's really, really important to get to that level 12, early to get level 2 familiars for Visage. And of course, if heroes buy additional damage block, it becomes even harder. So against Crimson Guard, for example, you just don't do anything. Crimson Guard gives 60 uh, damage block, which is as much damage as your max level familiars do. So unless you have some sort of uh, damage boost, uh, like Hemel Dominator or an Alpha Wolf or something like that, your birds will just do nothing, and even if you have those items, the birds still will do only negligible damage. So any sort of damage block is really tough to deal with as Visage. And your familiars have the Stone Form ability, and uh, this will heal them up completely, and it will also stun nearby heroes and do a little bit of damage. So this is uh, both a way of, of stunning people, of disabling people, stopping TPs, and also of course a way of uh, keeping your birds uh, safe and uh, healing them up when they've taken damage. You can either go to your birds and drop them manually by tapping through, or you can also use uh, the stone form help ability on your hero, and if you do that, just the closest familiar to will drop to the ground, and this is the perfect way of uh, um, dropping both of your birds quickly if you're in danger and you're taking too much damage. Uh, then you can just quickly save both of your familiars by just uh, um, double tapping the stone from hotkey, uh, of course very quickly and much faster than, than, uh, than tapping through here. And you can cast this ability even when you're disabled, so even though I'm taunted here I can still cast this on my birds. Uh, because they're not disabled. Same as it goes if I'm silenced or I'm stunned or something like that, you can still use that helper ability, as long as your birds aren't disabled. Your familiars have flying vision, but the vision is fairly limited. You can see this is a very little vision, uh, so they're not great for scouting, but sometimes they can still be used uh, if someone is hiding in the trees or something like that, and you know roughly where they are, then you can use those familiars. Let's talk about skill builds now, and I have a lot to say about this topic, because Visage's skill build is very situational, depends on a lot of factors, but of course the most important factor is whether you're playing the mid lane or whether you're playing one of the side lanes. So let's start with the build for mid lane. The crucial fact about Visage as a mid laner is that you're weak. In almost all matchups, you are the underdog. Your goal is not really to win the lane, your goal is more to just survive and get to level 6 in an, in an okay shape and not have too many of your creeps denied. You can actually trade reasonably well with your Grave Chill and with your Gravekeeper's Cloak, and if the opponent commits for a fight, you're actually reasonably strong with Soul Assumption. So, fighting and trading is not so much the problem, the problem is more CSing. Visage has a pretty awful attack animation and your damage is rather mediocre so last hitting is really difficult and it's very easy to get uh, out CS in lane and since mid is usually one versus one stone assumption is not as strong as in the side lanes so we are putting that a bit on the back burner and rather we're focusing on uh, grave chill so grave chill is great for early game trading and you can also use it to help you last hit. You can cast it on the enemy hero and then that will slow their attack speed and therefore also their attack animation and will speed up your own attack speed and your attack animation. And this way you can get a bit of an advantage in uh, CSing, but even so it's still gonna be hard. So in most cases you wanna put three points into this uh, early on. And then we get one value point in the, in the aura at level 2 usually, so the aura is great, it helps us trade better, it's a nice value point, 
with the four layers up that's a 32 percent damage reduction which is quite a lot for a single skill point and of course if your enemy uh, commits for a fight then you're gonna lose some of these uh, charges or layers and then you're gonna take more damage but in the sort of typical um, low committal harassment that you often have in the early laning phase uh, you're often going to be at or near uh, full layers so this is a pretty useful ability and soul assumption we still want to put one point to it uh, typically at level four just to like have that one point if like a gang comes in either the enemy gangs you or one of uh, your supports gangs the lane then this can be great and also if just the enemy decides to dive you something like that, then the Soul Assumption is, is great for fighting back. Um, but a single point is going to be enough for us at the start because this ability doesn't scale all that well. Of course, it goes without saying that you always want to uh, get summon familiars whenever you can. And then in terms of Gravekeeper's Cloak, you often get this maxed out uh, as soon as you actually have your birds. So you get the birds level 6 and then 7, 8, 9, you get this uh, maxed out. But sometimes if your birds are not in much danger and you're not doing that much fighting, it's more of a passive farming lane, then you would just uh, max out Gravestone at level 7 just uh, to get some extra farming speed uh, because it helps quite a bit when doing neutral camps. So that's the way it typically goes. But there are of course uh, many exceptions to that. If you're playing against a hero like Batrider, Batrider can just uh, dive you in the lane as soon as it's level 2. As soon as you have a couple of uh, sticky napalm stacks on you, you can just firefly and dive into your tower. And if you don't have a soul assumption, there's just no way you have a fighting back. So in this matchup, especially because Grave Club doesn't really do anything against uh, a bad rider because he has so many damage instances, um, you would just get soul assumption at level 2 and uh, possibly even get uh, more levels in soul assumption uh, just to be able to somehow be able to fight back in that lane. And then conversely, there's some heroes where Gravekeeper's Cloak is just uh, great. I guess a hero like uh, Zeus or Skyroth Mage, they don't have very many damage instances and um, their nukes just are completely ineffective against the Gravekeeper's Cloak. So in that uh, matchup, you would uh, level this up earlier and uh, uh, just have like a value point in Grave Chill and, uh, and Soul Assumption and then probably max this out first. In terms of talents, the level 10 talent is not actually that strong. It's kind of underwhelming. Uh, you typically go for the cast range of the damage because you're not really a right clicker. It's uh, more about being able to stay back as far as possible in the fights and the uh, cast range helps with that. But it's not particularly impactful. So often we end up delaying this talent uh, to at least level 11, sometimes even later. You can even go so far as just uh, uh, take all the other abilities first and then take the level 10 talent at level 16 and the level 15 talent at level 15. And there's something you can actually do, like if you look at the interface, it looks like you shouldn't be able to take this level 15 talent, but you actually can. You can just click on this and you have the level 15 talent then um, once you level up again, you can then take the level 10 talent. Speaking of the 15 talent, typically you want the solar assumption, it's two targets even as a core, even as a hero is doing well in game, you typically do a fairly sizable portion of your damage through solar assumption. So getting that to do double damage essentially yes. is uh, really great and just really boosts your DPS in team fights. And especially now that all the talents have been nerfed, uh, this uh, armor talent was reduced from 3 to 2.5, whereas the solar assumption is two targets. It's still the same, so usually you want to go for this uh, talent. And then level 15, it sort of depends on how well you're doing in the game. If you're having a good game and your familiars are doing a lot of work, then you want to boost them further with their familiar movement speed. But if you're in a game where your familiars tend to die rather quickly, and you often have to resummon them and so on, then probably uh, relying on that extra damage soul assumption is uh, the safer bet. But as a mid, you typically want the familiar movement speed bonus. And then at level 25, you again face a similar choice. 
animals. If you're doing really well in the game, you're familiar with surviving, just fine in fights, and it's just about increasing damage output that you want, then you can go for that extra familiar. But in most games, you'd rather have the extra protection from Gravekeeper's Cloak stacks. Now, this Gravekeeper's Cloak has a max damage reduction of 80%, so having more than four charges or layers doesn't actually do anything, but it just means that you have those five spare layers so that uh, you stay at this 80% damage reduction for much, much longer. Uh, so usually that is the better talent. So let's not talk about Visage as a three or four. In the side lanes, Soul Assumption is much stronger because you typically have a dual lane and this means it's much easier to actually get enough charges to make Soul Assumption worth, worthwhile. And if you're playing a tri lane versus tri lane, this is one of the strongest tri versus tri abilities in the game. So Visage is really strong in, in tri lanes, but even in dual lanes, you can often get enough uh, charges to fire off these fully charged Soul Assumptions and do devastating damage. Even more so than with mid Visage, there is no one size fits all build order you can go for here. So this is just uh, one suggestion. So oftentimes you're in a lane where you get enough uh, charges for Soul Assumption to be able to get these four and five charges up. And so we can just put, you know, three points in the Soul Assumption early and get value points in Grave Chill and Grave Keeper's Cloak. But this of course depends on the lane. If you see in your lane then you typically don't get these uh, three initial uh, charges up very easily, then you can just leave Soul Assumption at level 1 and prioritize your other abilities instead. As a side lane visage, we're not as reliant on our birds as mid visage is. So Grave Chill, which is part of the reason for get Grave Chill is just good extra DPS with your birds. So this is a less important skill for us. We do more of a DPS with Soul Assumption, so we leave Grave Chill as a value point in many games. Uh, but there are also other games where you have to put extra points into Grave Chill. For example, if you're laning as a hero like Ursa, who can run you down, getting extra points in Grave Chill is really valuable because that allows you to actually outrun uh, this uh, hero that uh, could otherwise kill you. And just like with mid Visage, we need to be able to protect our birds. So once we have the birds, we max out Gravekeeper's Cloak. But if you find yourself in a position where you do a lot of early game fighting, uh, especially team fighting, you might actually prefer to max out Soul Assumption earlier so you can actually uh, fire off those fully charged uh, Soul Assumptions earlier. Because in team fights, you typically fairly easily get those six charges up. And once again, we usually delay our level 10 talents. I have it again at the level 11 here, but often you would actually delay this even more, um, delaying it to like level 13 or 14 or even 16, because it's just not as high impact as uh, most of your abilities, honestly. And once again, we go for cast range, Soul Assumption is two targets, and then at level 20, it's again kind of a toss up depending on how the game is going. But since we're position 4 here, we're leaning more towards Soul Assumption rather than Familiars. But again, you might also go for the Familiar movement speed, it's also quite strong. And level 25, uh, similarly, we typically want the Gravekeeper's Cloak stacks. I have this build here for position 4 Visage, but post 3 Visage is uh, very similar in terms of its build. Uh, you maybe put a bit more emphasis on Grave Chill here if you're position uh, 3 Visage because Grave Chill is your primary farming ability, aside from your birds, obviously. But on the whole, uh, position 3 Visage is going to play this fairly similarly. So you have your skill build, what about items? Once again, I'm going to start talking about mid Visage. So our biggest problem at the start is being able to CS. So often we're going to start with a crown and three ironwood branches. This allows us to get plus 7 to all stats, boosting our damage quite a bit, allowing us to last it better and also just trade better in lane, gives us some extra 
health to play with, some extra mana, uh, overall a great start, and then very importantly, Crown builds into Helm of the Dominator, and your entire early game build as Visage is sort of focused around this Helm of the Dominator. Dominator is a really strong item on Visage, because it boosts the damage up of your familiars by a lot. It's a 30% damage increase. But if we have our level 1 birds and attacking a melee hero, they only do 12 damage on average. Um, and that is before armor reduction. And armor reduction reduces it even further. So uh, to, to deal with that problem, we have our Dominator which is going to increase our damage from 20 to 26. It says 20 plus 5, but that's just a rounding error uh, because it always rounds down and it's just uh, some floating point nonsense going on here. And this means that against melee heroes, we now do 18 damage instead of 12, which is a 50% increase, which is enormous for such a cheap item. And since Dominator is best if you get it early, because the creeps obviously um, are very strong if you get them early compared to heroes at that stage. So you want to get this early, helps boost your farm by a lot. So we want to buy as few other items as uh, possible on our way to Dominator. And this is why Crown is so great, it's a reasonably efficient set item and it actually builds in the item you want to build anyway. So this is why we prefer the crown over something like Null Talisman, which is uh, slightly strong in the lane, but uh, then it doesn't do as much uh, later on in the game. This starting item build costs exactly 600 gold, so you can't go for this if you lost some gold. Uh, so in that case, you can just go for uh, one branch and a um, fairy fire. You probably need additional region and lane, you typically buy yourself, of course, as most heroes do. And then um, probably you're going to need some mangoes along the way, maybe some extra tangos, maybe an extra self or two, uh, just normal mid laner things. And then depending on the matchup, you also might want to stick early on. Um, but other than that, you just pretty much straight rush for Dominator. If you're playing against a low mobility ranged hero, you might also consider going for a medallion first before you Dominator. And this will give you a stronger level 6 timing, because at level 6 your Dominator is not going to be finished yet, but you are probably going to have a medallion. And so this will allow you to try to get a kill on the enemy uh, mid laner uh, with your familiars and their medallion. And it's against range heroes, because melee heroes, as we said, don't take that much damage from level 1 birds. So if you're playing as a hero like Sniper or OD, that's definitely something to consider. But this, while it gives you stronger level 6 timing, will slow down your farm and will slow down your level 12 timing. So uh, in most cases, in most lanes, you want to go for a Dominator first. But once you have your Dominator, you definitely want that Medallion, because it gives a great damage boost uh, together with your Birds and your Dominator Creep. Uh, you also, of course, want Boots of Speed, and you typically want to complete your Magic Sting into a Wand. Uh, in what order you get these three items in, um, Medallion, Boots and Wand, uh, is situational. If you're just sort of staying passively in, in the lane and you're farming the lane, then you want to go for, for Medallion first. Uh, if you want to move out on the map and make plays around the map, you need those Boots. So these are the items you buy in virtually every game as mid Visage. Then what you go for next is oftentimes a Pipe of Insight. Pipe is a great item on Visage because it provides double protection to your birds. So first of all, it protects your main hero, which also means you're going to lose fewer of your Gravekeeper's Cloak stacks uh, because you're protected by that uh, magic block. And then it also, of course, uh, the, the magic damage block affects your familiars and the aura also affects your familiars. So it provides double protection by both uh, reducing the damage that uh, familiars take directly and also allowing you to keep those uh, stacks up for longer. And it's visage you're typically staying back in the fights unless the enemy jump you. You want to be on the outskirts of the fight and 
this means that you're primarily being hit by these sort of big AoE spells, and these tend to be magic damage in, in most cases. So Pipe is just a great item for Visage, also just in general it's a strong item for these uh, mid-game teamfights, which is uh, what Visage wants to do. Once you have those familiars up at level 2, you want to fight with your team, you want to push with your team, and an item like Pipe is uh, great for that. Of course, Pipe received some pretty harsh nerfs recently, but it's also coming off a long period of just uh, buff after buff. So at some point, they just completely overbuffed the item, made it completely broken, and now they're sort of bringing it back into a more reasonable state. Uh, pipe is still a good item, it's just uh, no longer completely broken. And on Visage you still want to buy this in most games, but not. But there's some games where you want to skip a pipe. Um, but still most games you want to go for the pipe. And similarly Solar Grest, also an item you want to go for in the vast majority of games. Of course a natural upgrade for Medallion. And this is an item that's typically not very urgent to buy. It's more if you have some sort of hero in your team that really benefits strongly from this item, um, then you go for this. If you have uh, something like a PA, for example, or a, a Terror Blade, any of these cores, any of these carries that uh, benefit uh, very strongly from having a Solar Crest, uh, then you can go for this um, fairly early, maybe even before the pipe. Uh, but generally, this is an item that. Uh, you want to get eventually, but you don't want to rush this. And often you want to get one or two of these situational items before you actually complete that solar crest. Since Visage is a mid-game team fighting kind of hero, you're all about these aura items, and also of course these aura items benefit your birds a lot, so um, you have double reason to go for aura items. So a very underrated item is Drum of Endurance. This item provides an aura now, attack speed aura, which of course boosts the DPS of your birds by 20%. And then of course, if you activate it, it's an even further buff for attack speed and movement speed. And so this item is, uh, is great for mid-game fighting. It's great for hitting timings because as long as you have those charges up, it's an incredibly efficient item. And later on, it loses a bit of if its luster when you have no charges left. Um, but it's still 20% attack speed, which is still decent. But of course, as Visage, your game plan is to get a big advantage during that, that mid-game period when you have those charges. And so Drum is just an item that fits the hero quite well. Flat is another of these aura items that of course um, are quite useful. It means your familiars do quite a bit of lifesteal. Uh, it's not that great anymore for, for Visage um, himself. But it's more of an item that you buy if your team wants to have this, and it's just an item that gives you a lot of sustain. It's an item that allows you to keep pushing uh, after one team fight because all of your teammates are going to get uh, extra lifesteal and uh, extra mana region. And mana region, of course, also very strong in Visage himself. So um, this is why it's an item that is often good, but uh, it's not like a super high priority item. In terms of boots upgrades, there's generally two options. There's Tranquil Boots. Or arcane boots. Arcane boots is great because you have um, such mana problems, and arcane boots helps uh, solve that. It doesn't only give you mana region, but also increases your max mana, which is uh, quite important because you're going to be spamming other soul assumptions in your in team fights. So having extra max mana is uh, very important. Uh, but if you don't want to go for arcane boots, uh, you might as well go for tranquil boots. It's not like it's a huge uh, upgrade or something, but. Uh, uh, it's just a, a nice thing to have. And if you go for arcane boots, uh, oftentimes you want to go for Greaves. Greaves and Mac are just really strong teamfight items. They help keep your birds alive, they help keep your team alive, and uh, you know, why not build them on Visage? They don't have a tremendous amount of synergy with Visage, but they're just generally strong items that fit in well with Visage's game plan. And then finally, we have Spirit Vessel which is another kind of aura item, but it's an aura that affects enemies and typically you want to stay in the outskirts of the fight, so aura items that affect enemies are not that great in Visage. But that said, if you are in a, in a game where you need to get an early vessel and no one else in the team is going for it, you might as well go for it on Visage. 
because it's just a, such a strong item and against particularly against these heroes that rely a lot on region and healing a uh, vessel is just absolutely cool to have in your team and oftentimes you just can't wait for a support to scrounge together the money for a vessel so you have to step in and as visage typically you want to win the mid game but uh, if you haven't and you have too much money you can go for things like an ac of course uh, boosts your damage of your birds and helps your team out you can go for aghanim scepter which gives you an extra bird which is um, all right i guess but usually it's more important to like boost the birds you already have and you protect them with things like uh, a pipe and and greaves or like boost the damage output with things like like drums or AC, which also of course help your team out uh, much more than an Aghanim's would. But if you're having a really good game, uh, you can go for an Aghanim Scepter. Scythe of course is always a strong late game option on any hero really, and especially on uh, an interro. Nothing particularly synergistic about this item, it's just a nice to have an extra disable. And then finally we have Bloodthorn, which is another of these luxury items. I can use this as an anti-evasion item that also of course helps your birds. But this is one of these items that you just go for if you have way too much money. So we've been zigzagging between mid and position 3 and 4. And now we're back to 3 and 4 again. And a central fact about Sideland Visage is that he's enormously mana hungry. You rely very heavily on Soul Assumption, this is your bread and butter spell in the lane. So you need the mana to be able to sustain that. So that's what our entire early game build is focused around, just getting mana, mana and mana. So you start with, of course, a set of tangos for some health region. And then you get the Basilius and Enchanted Mango, which is one of the standard builds you can do. You don't necessarily have to go for Basilius. But it's just a really efficient item over time, gives you so much mana, gives your lane partner a lot of mana and just allows us to get away with uh, buying fewer mangoes. And that one mango is very important because this allows us to actually cast three solar assumptions at level one and um, this will often lead to a first blood in the rune fight so having that mango at the start is crucial. But of course, it's not going to be the only mango you buy in a typical game. You want to buy lots and lots and lots of mangoes. You just keep buying mangoes in the laning phase as you need them. And then, especially if you're position 4, you can also rely on clarities a little bit. Because as a, as a 4, you can often just sit in fog for a little bit and, and reach with a clarity. But as a position 3, you want to last it all the time, so you can't really use clarities, typically. Uh, in the laning stage. So in a typical game you're going to be buying like 5 mangoes, 10 mangoes, maybe even more in the laning stage. Visage is really oh, mana hungry shit. and you're going to spend a lot of money on mangoes. And because we're so mana hungry we have to address these mana problems I'm first. We can't afford to rush Dominator in the same way we could in mid lane. What's so Dominator so of course is still a strong item but it's an item that's quite timing dependent. And if you delay it, it gets a lot worse. But that said, it's still an item that you often want to go for as a, a side envisage, especially if you position three, because it's just an item that helps you a lot with, with farming and uh, with scaling into the mid game. So on position four, you typically skip this item altogether, but it's still an item you can pick up. But on 3, you usually want to buy it, but it's not as, uh, as central as it would be for a mid-visage. So if you're not going for Dominator, what are we going for? Well, obviously, Stick is usually a good idea to get. And then, typically, our first item is going to be a Medallion of Courage. Medallion, of course, a really efficient item, especially once you have your birds online. Gives you a much more kill potential at level 6, and it's a your strong fighting item and since you have less farm priority you can't just afford to just uh, stay in your lane and uh, play passively until you level 12 which you can sometimes get away with as a mid laner but as a 3 or especially as a 4 you need to be able to fight early so medallion is the item of choice typically and of course boots for some extra movement speed uh, is pretty obvious typically you can get away with getting boots after medallion but if you're against a hero like Ursa or Juggernaut, where movement speed is very important, you want to get uh, the boots first, and you maybe also want to get a Windlace, 
just to be able to get some extra movement speed and uh, be safer. If you do want to go for Dominator, you can either get it before your medallion or afterwards. Getting it before medallion is sort of the more greedy version, allows you to farm better, but also means that your level 6 timing is going to be weaker because you're not going to have a completed Dominator at 6. Now at this point, the itemization is going to be fairly similar to a mid lane Visage. The difference of course being that you're going to have less farm. And this also means that Pipe is not really a core item anymore, it's more of an optional item. Because it's so expensive now, it's an item that you may not be able to really afford. But of course Pipe is still a very strong item and it's uh, uh, an item that you should always strongly consider going for even as position 4 Visage. Since you have a medallion anyway, Solar Crest is an obvious upgrade, again quite expensive and like with, with Mid Visage, not necessarily an item you want to rush for, but it's an item you want to get eventually in, in most games. And then in terms of boots, once again you face the choice between Tranquil Boots and Arcane Boots or just uh, keeping them as Brown Boots, that's always a, a strong option on, on Visage. Because none of the boots are like super strong in Visage. But if you want to upgrade them, either Tranquils or Arcane Boots are strong. Then for similar reasons as with Mid Visage, Mech and Guardian Greaves can be a strong option. And then of course all these aura items like Vlads and, and Drum. But uh, typically you're not going to be able to afford the more expensive aura items like, uh, like an AC. Because uh, you just can have less farm. But of course, if it goes to a very late game, AC is still an option. And then of course you can just buy these traditional support items that keep you alive, like Full Staff, Glimmer Cape, Ghost Scepter, depending on what the game situation demands. But as a general rule of thumb, you want to buy as many of these defensive support items as you have to, and as many of the aura and utility items as you can. So if you can get away with it, just skip these items, but sometimes you just have to get, get these items just to, be able to stay alive. A quick note about playing against Radiance. If you're facing a hero with Radiance, the damage is enough to actually consume your Gravekeeper's Cloak stacks. So Radiance does 60 burn damage, which when reduced goes down to 45 against the standard 25 magic resist. But if you just buy a single cloak, that is enough to actually protect you, and then you no longer lose those uh, cloak stacks. But of course, also means that you actually take more damage on your hero uh, because uh, now the damage is less than 40, so he just doesn't interact with Gravekeeper's Cloak aura. But of course, uh, having this cloak means that you preserve your charges and you keep your familiars alive as well as keeping yourself alive against other sources of damage. Fun fact about familiars, they are both creep heroes and ancients, and ancients don't take damage from radiance burn, so your familiars themselves don't actually take damage from radiance, but of course if your gravecomber slokes get burnt away by radiance then your familiars become vulnerable to everything else, so that is why getting at least a value cloak against radiance is uh, important. So let's talk about the laning phase and once again we're going to start with the mid lane. Visage is a very weak solo laner who's terrible at last hitting. So you want to avoid the static lanes where both heroes are just CSing since in that scenario you almost always lose. You're going to get so many of your groups denied. You want the lane to ping pong between your tower and theirs and this makes it a lot harder for the enemy to deny your creeps and it means that you're both just trading XP and that is exactly where you want to be. Your goal in lane is to stay in the lane, get whatever scraps of farm you can and get to level 6. And once you're 6, you might be able to seriously pressure or perhaps even kill your opponent, especially if they're a slow range hero, they were like Sniper or OD, but more likely you won't be able to be strong enough to, uh, to actually threaten the enemy mid at 6. So your goal this phase of the game is just to stick in mid, you alternate between pushing out the lane and farming the nearby medium camp. You typically don't want to rotate or TP to other lanes at this stage since you need your farm and you're too weak to do much without your birds who obviously don't come along if you TP. So instead your job is to pressure mid. 
If the enemy mid is also staying in mid, that's fine with you. Then neither mid is participating in, in the side lanes and things are balanced. If the enemy mid rotates, uh, you take advantage of that and you push down that lane. And then the enemy mid either has to concede the tower, which is the most important tower in the game, or they have to return, in which case it's once again just even trading farm. And then once you've completed your dominator, you have to think about whether you need to participate in the action in the side lanes. Ideally, for your own game plan, you would just uh, stay in mid and farm until you hit level 12. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes your team just needs you to become active earlier. And once you have your dominator, you can become active. But as I said, ideally for your own game plan, for your own development, uh, it's best if you just stay in, in mid and get that level 12. And that is the biggest power spike. Once you're level 12, you want to group up with your team, you want to push down lanes, you want to take objectives. This is the time when Visage really shines. So what about the side lanes? The thing about the side lanes is you want to have a kill lane. Visage does not do well in these low commitment trades where you occasionally hit the enemy. This is not where Visage shines. You want to utilize your soul assumption and this power comes into play when you have these committed fights where you're trying to kill the enemy or they're trying to kill you. And in these kinds of fights, Visage is one of the strongest heroes. And a good example of that is the initial rune fight. If the enemy decide to fight you, you just deal so much damage. You have three solar assumptions available. That's uh, three instances of a 245 damage nuke that can fly out there. And this is often enough to get you first blood. One problem that Visage faces is that he has no real way of forcing a fight. So you have to rely on your lane partner or the enemy to actually initiate the fight. So the enemy is going to your lane partner, that's great for you, you can almost always turn the right fight around by using your soul assumption, um, assuming you have enough mana of course. But if they go on you, they might just be able to kill you before you get off more than one soul assumption or perhaps even no soul assumptions at all. So Visage is very speed dependent, so as a 3 it's important that your support uh, doesn't constantly lead to experience. You want him in the lane to get kills, to make aggressive plays, but you don't want to constantly hover around you. And as a 4, uh, getting an early level 6 is quite difficult. So if you get the opportunity, sitting in an empty lane can be great if you have some sort of um, position 3 hero that uh, wants to maybe jungle a little bit or wants to rotate once he has level 6 then it's great to just be able to sit in a lane or if you have like a, a mid laner who wants to go jungle, he can sit in mid uh, anything to get some extra experience is great and once you have your birds up you're quite good at farming so you can push at waves, you can take jungle camps when there's downtime but as a 3 and especially as a 4 you can't afford to just farm until you're level 12. You need to be more proactive and uh, actually fight with your team. So, when do you pick Visage? For that, let's look at Dota buff, look at the counter section, and here you can see the heroes that Visage counters the most. And as you can see, Visage is actually best against Clockwork. So the reason for that, the primary reason is that the birds can just fly over Clockwork's cogs and this means that even if Clockwork manages to hookshot you or one of your allies you can always just fly in with your birds and then that damage from battery assault gets split three ways and uh, Clockwork becomes much less of a threat. Fun fact, uh, Clockwork hook uh, actually is blocked by birds so birds are affected by the hook and uh, get, get stunned and uh, this means that Clockwork is going to have an even harder time hitting hooks against you. But this is unlike uh, Pudge's hook, which actually goes through birds. So it just passes right through your birds, and you have to be careful against that if you're playing against uh, Pudge. But other than Clockwork, almost all the heroes that Visage is really strong against are ranged heroes. As I talked about, they don't have damage blocks, so they die quicker. Your like Tinker is quite vulnerable in his visage because you can only blind one of your birds or your hero it doesn't really affect you too much you can find him in the trees because you have flying vision with birds and 
he can't really deal with your um, Gravekeeper's Cloak stacks because Martial Machine, as we talked about, doesn't do enough damage to uh, actually uh, take off those layers. And here's like Bane, Zeus, and OD. They're very single target oriented. They don't have the kind of AV damage that uh, rapidly depletes your layers. So these heroes, they're also quite immobile, so you can easily kill them. And that's why Visage is strong against them. Let's look at heroes that Visage is weak against. And the number one culprit here is Naga Siren. So first of all, Visage has a bad time dealing with multiple units. So illusion heroes, heroes with summons, are going to pose a problem. That's why, for example, also Broodmother is a problem. That's why Lycan is a problem, why Phantom Lens is a problem. In addition to that, Naga Siren also has a lot of damage instances from her illusions and from her Riptide. So once she gets on top of you, your layers just melt away instantly and you just die. A Broodmother can't really easily break through your uh, Gravekeeper's Cloak's layers, but her spiders do more than enough damage anyway. So Brood can't very efficiently kill your birds, but she can always just go after your main hero and there isn't very much that Visage can do against that. Medusa is up here because she has a lot of consistent AV damage. As Visage, is, it's okay to deal with heroes that have like one or two AV spells that just do one damage instance each. That's fine, that's not a problem. The problem is the kind of consistent AV damage that Medusa puts out. With a split shot, she can just consistently hit you and your birds, thereby removing your layers and killing your birds at the same time. So that's really tough to deal with. And then Darkseer, his Iron Shell actually has so many damage instances that uh, it doesn't reach that 40 damage threshold. So he's not going to be able to take off your layers with his Iron Shell. But Darkseer is typically played together with other heroes that do a lot of AoE damage. So you use your Vacuum to set up for other AoE spells that then remove your layers. And then you have no layers, you have all this magic damage coming in, and then you die, you burst die, and you're gonna have a bad time. Also, Darkseer is a natural Crimson Guard carrier, which is, of course, a very big problem as Visage. Another important consideration is team synergy. So, Visage is not an initiator, and he's not a playmaker. So, you need other heroes in your team to fill these roles. So especially this is important if you're playing as a 3 or a 4, because usually these kinds of heroes are the playmakers and the initiators. So if you play Visage in the side lanes, you typically want your lane partner, who is typically going to be the other 3 or 4 role, to be an initiator, a playmaker. So with heroes like Axe, like Sand King, like Clockwork, like Nyx, like Earth Spirit, heroes you can initiate, who can frontline for you, these are also heroes that are not only important later on in the game to have, but also in the laning stage, these heroes tend to be good together with Visage, because you want someone to be in the front lines, to tank the damage for you so that you can get your soil assumption stacks up, and this way you can win your lane, you have this sort of durable frontliner, and you are the damage dealer with soul assumption. So Visage is a micro hero, you need to control those birds, and you often have a controlled creep with the dominator, so let's talk a little bit about how to actually micro. First of all, let's look a bit at settings. So if you go to the advanced options, you'll find an option here for summon unit auto attack. By default, this is set on always. You don't want that. Unless you're one of the freaks who play with auto attack, you want to put this on standard or never or same as zero, one of these three options, so that your summoned units don't just randomly attack things. There are two important buttons for Visage and basically any micro hero. And those are select all control units, and then in the advanced hotkeys, it's select all other units. Uh, you want to put these two on reasonable keys. Select all units, selects all the regular units, doesn't select things like courier and other non attacking units. And then you have the select all the units that selects everything except for your hero. Also, if you have like illusion or something like that, would also select those. So as long as you're using those two, you don't necessarily need to use control groups with Visage, but it still helps a lot. So uh, these are the kind of control group setups that uh, I've used. So I'm using 
uh, six control groups. You have four controls by default here. Um, you can assign them to whatever you want. And then in advanced hardcores, you have more control groups. Uh, I only use six, that's uh, enough for me. So what I do with the uh, visage is the following. And again, this is just my control groups. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're best for you. That's just something that works for me. And uh, if you have a setup that works for you, just go with that. Uh, but if you don't and you want some inputs, uh, here are my control groups. So I have on uh, one, I have my visage and all my birds. Then on two, I have uh, just my birds. On three, I have my controlled creep, my dominated creep. And then on four and on five, I have individual uh, birds so that I can use them for things like scouting. I think so I need to separate the birds. Um, and then, of course, I'm using F2 if I want to move all my units and or just uh, the circumflex uh, a hotkey if I use uh, all other units. Uh, this is, I'm using a German keyboard. This for me is the um, key that's uh, next to the one key. So I think that would be tilde on an American uh, keyboard. And then also have on six, I have a hotkey for tornado. So if I have this valving ripper creep um, by some other tornado, I don't have to manually select this tornado. There's no chance of like misclicking. I can just uh, summon tornado and then just use my uh, six hotkey and then use that and uh, micro the tornado. This just saves some time in, in rare cases, but it's not very important. And all these groupings can be done in demo mode, like here. Um, at some point, I put tornado on six and then it just remembers the game, remembers that every time I start a new game, it's always uh, tornado's already gonna be on six and uh, my dominant creep, whatever that is, at the moment is gonna be on three, my birds are gonna be on two and so on. In terms of which creeps to take and how to micro them, I've made a whole video on that, which I'm gonna link in the top right. But here's the brief version. Brief version is you want one of these three creeps, the Helper Smasher, Alpha Wolf and the Center Conqueror are usually going to be the three best creeps to take. And um, the Alpha Wolf gives you a very strong aura, 30% damage aura. This is amazing for your birds as well as for your um, allies. And then you have the Center Conqueror, which has the stomp ability. That's a two second stun. And with uh, Dominator, it gets bonus movement speed. There's 425 movement speed. And um, this makes it quite easy to land stomps on people, especially when you slow them with Grave Chill. And then we have the Helva Smasher, who is kind of like a, a mixture between those two creeps. So it has similar ability. Um, this time it's a slow, not a stun, but it does more damage. Um, but it also has an aura, so it has a swiftness aura, 15% attack speed, of course great for your familiars. So either of these three creeps is great. Uh, generally, in in the early game, you want to get a Helber Smasher or a, a Centaur. These creeps give you a greater kill potential. Uh, but then in late game, Alpha Wolves is probably dominant, just because you get extra um, damage that of course scales with uh, your other heroes in your team, as well as with your familiars that just get more damage as they uh, go up in level. And uh, just generally in late game, it's not as easy anymore to land those uh, storms or these thunderclaps. And of course, you don't get one of these big three creeps. There's also a lot of other creeps that are useful to take, um, but I'm not going to go into those in detail here. So the general approach to fighting is as follows. You select either just your, your hero and your birds, or you select your, your, all, your, all your units, and then you right click the nearest enemy, you grave chill him, you use your other abilities, and you use your soul assumption whenever it's off cooldown, and you sort of stay in the outdoors of the fight. Once you've engaged an enemy, you have to sort of reevaluate can I stay in the fight if your uh, Grave Grip's Cloak? Layers uh, run low, you need to be retreating with the hero, you need to get into a safer position, and then he still have your familiars attacking, um, but still be in aura range. So um, it's 1200 aura range, it's quite a long range, but you have to be careful um, to stay in that aura range, and uh, 
you want to stay on the edge of the fight and not take too much damage. And in the fight you need to constantly reevaluate how safe you are when you're no longer safe. Um, you probably, your birds are about to die and you need to drop the birds right now. So it's important to drop them a little bit earlier than you think you should because uh, it takes uh, a roughly half a second for the birds to actually drop down and that time they can still be killed. So uh, just cast it slightly earlier than you think you should and then you're gonna be fine. And you just need to watch like a hawk once your birds take damage because then that probably means that your um, layers are gone and your birds are about to die very very soon and you need to be very fast with dropping them down. So typically in the early game you can, uh, you can afford to just send all the units in um, or later on if you're just uh, fighting a single hero you can send in your dominant creep easily but uh, later on in team fight your creep is just gonna die if you send it in and so it's better just uh, let it stay back a bit and just uh, provide its aura and then maybe send it in once uh, most of the enemy heroes are dead or most of their, their abilities have been used um, so you don't just uh, lose that creep uh, for no reason so this is how you play Visage now go forth and practice him in your pubs and if you enjoyed this video please leave me a like and uh, subscribe to this channel um, for more content on Visage and various other micro heroes, I'm planning another video uh, kind of like this uh, c fairly complete guide on Chen that's going to be out in like a week or two um, but of course in the meantime it's also going to be a couple other videos uh, to tide you over and if you want to see some more Visage uh, content that's a bit more practical, a bit more applied I've uh, covered various uh, pro games, also a game of my own, um, where I'm playing Visage. So I'm going to include uh, two of these games uh, here on the screen. Just click on one of those videos and um, watch that. And, always willing, I will see you there.